our friend, Mr. Mark Simone, Mr. New York of 710 WOR. He's on before us in that market. We're honored to have such a fantastic lead in, and uh, he's getting amazing numbers there. Mr. Mark, good to have you on, sir. Hey, thanks. Thanks for all the nice words. Um, we are looking at some interesting stuff happening in New York these days. That's probably always true, but in the political sense, particularly interesting stuff happening right now. Um, I'm just going to put this to you so we can dive into it. Back in 2008, Barack Obama won New York that year by a 26.9% margin of victory. Okay, so I'm going to call it 27 points, which is, you know, that is... A beatdown for sure. I'm looking right now, Mark, at the latest Siena College polling, uh, which was just from a week ago, and and the uh, the polls all compiled here on 538.com. They've got in New York Trump v. Biden, Biden up seven points, Biden up eight points. You think something big is is perhaps in the mix? What's going on here? Is this going to be competitive? Oh, no, I think uh, Donald Trump's going to win New York. I don't think it's going to be competitive. I think he'll win it. Uh, you you got to remember about 2008. McCain was, for whatever reason, he wasn't a strong candidate. Turnout for him was extremely low, so that's not the best test. Uh, now, remember, Ronald Reagan won New York twice. Twice. So it can be done. I know that's a long time ago, but Trump is uh, is different from anybody else. He's beloved in New York by a lot of people. Uh, I, know, I know New York City's the problem, but... Uh, half the voters are outside of New York City. He's got them. And normally he'd have trouble in New York City, but a lot of that Democratic base is secretly, quietly moving over to Trump. Uh, people that just don't like the crime anymore, they don't like it out of control. He, he goes to Harlem, uh, where that bodega is, or or as Biden would say, that bogota, and uh, <laughs> he appears at that bodega. And watch the video. Everybody in the street is cheering him. There's no booze anywhere. Uh, he goes to the construction site on Park Avenue. But remember, it's working class guys, construction workers who live in New York, and they're all cheering him and chanting for him. I think he wins. I think he wins New York. All right. I want to dive into this because this is a bold prediction. I love bold predictions, uh, the, the, Buck, as Buckwell knows, although I've I've lost on uh, several of my bold predictions here. I want to hit you with a couple of fact patterns. Um, close race just happened, to be fair. 2022 governor's race, Kathy Hochul. Not very popular. Lee Zeldin loses 53 to 47. So let me ask you this question. If Kathy Hochul and Lee Zeldin ran in 2024, in other words, if we didn't have a midterm 2022 election, if they were on the ballot, I presume you think Lee Zeldin would win head to head against Kathy Hochul as well. And that there's been a further shift rightward since he would have lost by six points two years ago. Yeah, I love Lee Zeldin. Great guy. He'd be an excellent governor. He's not exactly the most dynamic candidate in the world. And Hochul had all that uh, Democratic momentum behind her. But people have now seen her in office for a few years, and she stinks. She's absolutely awful. Uh, Between the congestion pricing, doing nothing about this anti-Semitism all over the campuses, uh, doing nothing about, uh, about inflation in the state, congestion pricing is ridiculous. She sends the National Guard into the subway to protect people. There's crime down there. They have no power in the subway to do anything. So she decides they'll inspect packages or bags. or I I don't know any criminal that brings luggage with them. They don't have briefcases. They don't have purses. I I don't know what what they're inspecting. So, yeah, Zeldin could win today. And uh, I I really think Trump, you know, you said he was seven, eight points behind. That was the case in almost every swing state, and he closed those gaps. He's good at closing 8% gaps. He'll do it in New York. Okay, so if he wins New York, this is going to be a landslide. Do you agree with that? I mean, because he's not going to lose Pennsylvania and win New York, right? He's not going to lose Wisconsin and win New York. He's not going to win New York and lose Michigan. I mean, that would mean that he would sweep through the Midwest. He might win Minnesota. What you're saying is six months out, you think Trump is not only going to win, he's going to win comfortably. By ten o'clock Eastern on election night, we would know who the who the that, that he was the winner. Well, yeah, I mean, who knows what the Democrats will pull, but uh, it's only going to get better for Donald Trump, and it's only going to get worse for Joe Biden mentally. Uh, things will come out. Uh, I think these trials 
have had just the opposite effect Democrats intended. People are starting to look at these trials. I don't mean the MSNBC crowd. I mean normal people. And they don't like uh, the total perversion of our justice system. They don't like any of this. It's only going to get better for Trump. Uh, in the summer, you'll see momentum just accelerate. Do you think Biden's going to debate, Mark? I'm sure you saw today he said on another radio show, oh, yeah, I'll debate Trump. Trump's response to it was, no one really believes that, right? What do you think? Uh, I don't believe it. I, I, I mean, what was his exact words? I'd be happy to. He's not saying I'll do it. I, I'd be happy to. Uh, but the staff, whoever, will come up with a million excuses not to do it. Hey, you notice Biden won't talk to the New York Times, won't give them an interview, won't give any real news organization an interview, but he's happy to do Seth Meyers and Howard Stern. What does that tell you about his confidence? Yeah, no, there's clearly a, a coddling of him in the media that goes beyond even what we normally would expect. We're speaking to Mark Simone, Mr. New York of 710 WOR in NYC. So you mentioned the trials, Mark, and Clay and I have tried to do a little bit of jury pool analysis, but also looking back or, you know, taking a step back and looking at the overall system in New York City. Do you have any faith that that there might be somebody on that jury who's just going to say this is too crazy, I can't go along with this, or do you think that it's kind of a done deal and they might get a guilty verdict on this? Uh, you know, I, I don't have a lot of confidence. It's a it's a New York jury. It's a totally over the top biased judge. The only good news is the Harvey, Harvey Weinstein reversal was based on all these things the judge did, and this judge in the Trump trial has done exactly the same thing. So that almost guarantees the the reversal. Hopefully the judge is looking at this and will ease up a little, but uh, n- there's so far there's no crime alleged. The catch and kill, perfectly legal. Biden did the biggest catch and kill in history when he had uh, Facebook, Twitter, the biggest publishers, cover up the Hunter laptop scandal. So, But you, you're right. You can, you can never tell what a jury will do. <laughs> you mentioned... That again, you think Trump's gonna gonna win New York, which would be amazing and would be a lot of fun to watch. Because can you imagine the panic that would ensue in MSNBC and CNN if because New York comes in early, and if you start seeing those numbers and Biden is only up a couple of points or Trump is within a couple of points, what does the tally look like? Uh, you had forty seven percent. If I'm looking at this uh, overall, um, I, you know, in, in terms of turnout in 2022. Do you think there's going to be a massive turnout in the New York election, or do you think Biden's just not getting out his base? Black voters are moving on, Asian, Hispanic voters. What does the coalition look like for Trump if that were to happen? Yeah, I think yeah, that's a good point. But I think low turnout for Biden, and you don't usually get the high Republican turnout in New York, but you'll get it this time because, again, crime is a huge factor. Also, this anti-Semitism. The stuff on the college campus, it's frightening a lot of people, not just Jews, but uh, Christians, Gentiles as well, because this kind of bigotry being tolerated uh, is, is frightening a lot of people. And uh, just watch the perversion of the justice system, the total disintegration of our universities, the streets, everything is just awful, the migrants everywhere. I think you're going to see enormous Republican turnout this time. Also, look at uh, Long Island. Nassau County, which is a a good barometer, the uh, county executive, the attorney uh, uh, general, the Republicans swept in Nassau County. It's a good indicator of what's coming. Mark Simone, everybody. Mark, appreciate you being with us. Thanks for calling in from uh, 710 WOR. Great to have you, as always. Uh, Thanks. Love listening to you every day. Thanks, man. Thanks so much. You know, Clay, I just want to say, you know, you you, you said it. You're a bold prediction guy, but... Trump, if, if Trump wins New York, this is up there with, uh, you remember when, I, some of you do remember this, uh, Ann Coulter was on Bill Maher's show at the very beginning of the 2016 cycle primary, and they said, who do you think is going to win? And she said, right on camera, she stared right in the camera. This is before like, the polls showed him ahead. She said, Donald Trump. Uh, and they had to have her on later. That was a heck, whatever you think, that was a heck of a call. If Mark is right and Trump wins New York the first time a Republican will have won it since Ronald Reagan, we're going to have to have him on for a little victory dance. I, I, I think Trump will make, you know, it's funny. He's so ready to go that, that Trump will win that me pointing out that he's only behind, even by Democrat pollsters, six, seven points. I mean, that's, that's a contested state if you really look at it, right? Six or seven points looks like that's up for grabs. So it's not as crazy. That's why I said Barack Obama won by almost 30 very different times now. Yeah, and I think 
This is a good question because you guys out there listening can help us with this. Is that the boldest prediction in three years of us being on the air? In terms of guests, I know you and I have made bold predictions, but I don't even think I've gone that far in making a bold prediction about New York because it's not just if he's right. Think yeah. about it. I've, I've made some bold predictions, many of them wrong. Um, but uh, but if you think about it, if New York flips, that's why I asked him. I mean, Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin are going to go Trump. And then I think Minnesota probably would. And I think you would flip Virginia potentially. Like you're talking you're right. about if a New York goes Trump, it's a style. It, it, it's, a, it's a total butt kicking. There's no question about it because you're not going to win New York and not win Pennsylvania. You're, you're not going to win New York and then fail to win Pennsylvania and some of these other, these other key states. Uh, but I think that, look, I mean, you talk about predictions. I thought Lee Zeldin was going to win and maybe that for governor. And that would have been at least one repudiation of a COVID lockdown lunatic governor. Yeah. Unfortunately, it didn't end up happening, but he made it close. And, you know, New York, right after California, is the biggest Democrat stronghold state that there is. So the fact that it would even be uh, a place where you're going to, I think you're going to see uh, Republican members of Congress that are doing well in New York, we would not have the very thin. And some of that is self-inflicted wounds by the Republicans in Congress, unfortunately. But we would not have a Republican majority if it were not for New York Republicans and California Republicans coming out and and winning in some key congressional races and, and the GOP base turning out for them there. Particularly in New York, Long Island, Nassau, and Suffolk counties. I mean, turning out big for Republicans. I do think that's big Trump territory. We talked about this last year when I was up in Cooperstown, how blown away my kids were. Trump flags everywhere. Everywhere we went in upstate New York, when we were in Cooperstown, New York, my kids couldn't get over mm. it. We were driving around. I mean, that is major Trump territory. And what some Mark Simone just hit on is, it's really you win in Manhattan. I remember we had Lee Zeldin on, and you win in Manhattan by limiting the amount that Democrats can run up the score. And I do think that Manhattan and in the New York City area mm. I don't think that Biden's going to run up the score. I think, again, it comes down to these suburban moms, these suburban women, and maybe they're not threatened in New York over the abortion argument because it's easier to get an abortion now, I think, in New York than it was before Roe v. Wade was overturned. Well, this I mean, is why I think, you know, we had that caller before and he said he's so worried about how abortion is going to play into this. It worked really well in 2022 because they were able to lie to people and say, in, even, you know, in, in all kinds of states, they're going to stop you from getting abortions uh, in places like New York. And I think this is a tragedy, but in places like New York, uh, it's still just as easy to get an abortion. And so it's a lot harder, I think, to, to drive turnout because that that is the law. People can un understand it there. We'll, we'll take some of your calls. I'm wondering if anybody else, let's see if anybody else, Clay, in New York wants to back Mark up on this one. Um, among the boldest, for sure, predictions we have heard on this show and you know mark is very tied into the political scene in new york city and up in albany for new york state so you know he would i i talked to him a little bit before and i said are you sure do you want you to sure say you it's competitive say that publicly on the he, air i was yeah. like you really want to let it rip he said he is confident he is fired up and he says he sees it so if you want to back mark up on this one 800-282-2882 you know i was just talking about how it's tragic but abortion is continuing and in fact, last year was an all-time high. Uh, the numbers are not trending the way we need them to. Now, part of this is the fight in politics and the law, sure. But a part of it is also just helping moms who, or moms-to-be who are in a crisis moment and helping guide them to the right decision so that they make a decision for life. And that is what the preborn clinics do across the country. Preborn is a nonprofit that performs life-saving work for tiny babies day in and day out. Their focus is unborn children and each day they are saving the lives of 200 of them by helping convince mom that that little baby deserves a life and the way they do this is very straightforward preborn opens their dorms and their hearts to pregnant women who are deciding between life and abortion for their baby they offer an ultrasound so they can allow mom to meet that tiny baby inside her womb but that's just one of many resources preborn also offers uh, women at their centers Maternity clothes, diapers, baby care items, baby formula, all the stuff that a baby and mom need for a happy and healthy first couple of years after birth. One ultrasound, though, because the ultrasound is so important. That's the decision point. That's the fulcrum. 
that can turn toward life. An ultrasound is just $28, but any amount will help. All gifts are tax deductible. To donate securely, dial pound 250, say the keyword baby. That's pound 250, say baby. Or go to preborn.com slash buck. That's preborn.com slash B-U-C-K. Sponsored by Preborn.